So my name is Chris Harwood, and I'm a co-director of the East Central European Center at the Harriman Institute here at Columbia University. And I'm very happy to uh, welcome you to the next um, event we have in this series of discussions of films, contemporary films from East Central Europe. Uh, the, the title of the series we have this year is Contemporary Society and Its Discontents. And so we've chosen films all made within the last five years uh, that show something about uh, how life in East Central Europe is a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, and uh, I think the, the film we're going to be discussing today sort of fits that definition to a T. Uh, before we step to that, I just want to put, uh, make a pitch for the next discussion we'll have in this series. Um, it's going to be on Tuesday, April 13th. Uh, we'll be having a discussion of the Hungarian film uh, One Day from 2017 uh, by director Zsofia uh, Szilagyi. So please uh, mark your calendar for that and join us for that film event. Uh, but speaking of calendars, uh, the, the film we have for today is, I guess, in the midst of kind of a, an anniversary, if I'm not mistaken, uh, because it, the film opened uh, three days ago last year, something like that, and um, was not open for long before uh, the coronavirus pandemic shut the, the film, you know, shut the cinemas down. And so uh, a lot of films, of course, uh, have faced adverse um, situations because of this, but this film really hit it head on. Um, it came to New York uh, 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 to the Tribeca Film Festival, which alas was only a virtual uh, film festival at that time, uh, but where it took the, uh, the best international feature award in a unanimous decision by the jury. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of reasons that we're really excited uh, uh, to include this film in our series. Um, and, and so without further ado, I'm gonna just introduce my colleague, uh, Christopher Case, who is a lecturer in Polish at Columbia University and a former director of the East Central European Center. Uh, and uh, sort of as our expert on all things related to Polish culture, he's going to introduce our guests and, uh, and lead the discussion going forward. So take it away, Chris. All right, wonderful, thank you, Chris. Um, as Chris said, we are very fortunate today to have um, with us two um, exciting uh, people in uh, the uh, world of Polish film. We have with us today Jan Komasa, the director of the film The Hater. Um, and Jan Komasa may um, already have, uh, you may have already heard Jan Komasa's name um, a year ago uh, in the context of his film Corpus Christi, which was nominated for an Academy Award. Uh, in uh, 2019, losing only to The Parasite. Um, so Jan Komasa, um, already a, um, an awarded and uh, uh, award-nominated filmmaker uh, with us today. In Poland, he is known for his feature film, The Suicide Room, which, as I understand it, is the first installment in a series, uh, The Hater being the second um, film in the is installment, The Suicide Room 2, um, as it were. Um, he's also the uh, the uh, director of no less than two films about the Warsaw Uprising, um, one film, a documentary, and one feature film, both award-winning films within Poland. Um, and then again, of course, Corpus Christi, nominated for the Academy Award last year. Um, and as Chris mentioned, The Hater, now out um, on Netflix, available for, for streaming. I hope that some folks had the opportunity to take a look at that before our event here. Um, and the uh, Best Film Award at the Tribeca Film Festival. Uh, in 2020. So we're very happy to welcome uh, filmmaker Jan Komasa here with us today. Hi everybody. Hi Chris. Hi uh, Chris. Yes, Hi. Um, I'm you. happy to be here. I am, hey. you know, was waiting to meet you guys. Wonderful. And let's also introduce Maciej Musiałowski, um, one of Poland's um, most prominent young actors, uh, also with an uh, already illustrious award-winning and award-nominated career behind him. Um, uh, uh, in particular for The Hater, which perhaps we might refer to as Maciej's sort of breakout role or, or um, um, sort of most prominent role to date. Uh, Maciej has actually won the uh, Best Actor Award uh, for this, for his role in this film at the um, International Independent Cinema Festival in Krakow, Poland, off-camera, the off-camera festival, um, and is also um, active in television and film. He's also I believe appearing in, uh, or has appeared in the Netflix um, TV series Ultraviolet, which Jan, uh, I believe, contributed the direction to for a few episodes as well. So both both uh, Jan and Maciej active in, in television um, as well, and also 
uh, can be seen on Netflix in, I believe, uh, Mache in the second season of Ultraviolet. And Jan has directed some episodes from season one of Ultraviolet. Um, hey, so hello, we're very, everyone. We're very happy to have Mache with us as well here today. Chris, yeah. just before um, before you set in with questions, I just wanted to let our audience know uh, that you're going to be leading our discussion with some questions, yeah. but uh, we welcome uh, questions from the audience at any time. Uh, if you're following on the Zoom webinar, you can put your questions into the Q&A function. And if you're following us on the YouTube live stream, uh, I guess in the comments section, uh, you can send questions in, which uh, we will pick up. So back to you, Chris. Okay, wonderful. Um, well, I thought I would just uh, start by asking uh, Jan a question about the film, and um, I'm interested in the idea of the series. Um, you know, the film is known as The Hater in English, um, but in Polish, you, you uh, or I, what I, from what I'm seeing online, the title is Sala Sama Wojców, or The Suicide Room, um, The Hater, uh, as if it were, in a sense, a, a sequel or a... Um, um, another part in an ongoing series of the Suicide Room. So I wonder if you could maybe just say a little bit about how you see the uh, the two films together. Do they form a series? Is it a unit? Um, you know, uh, what was at stake for you in referring to the earlier film in the title of this new film? What are the overarching issues you're attempting to to sort of thematize in in bringing these two films together and putting them um, in a sense in a series? Yeah. Thank you. Well. Um... This um, the hater came from basically like the, the 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 original idea of to make a film about uh, the phenomenon of online hate hatred and the business behind it the industry because now we can can talk about industries that flourish um, especially with, within the realm on, of online smear campaigns etc. Mm -hmm. We've all witnessed it during the 2016 election in the United States, not only in, in Poland as well, um, on in different instances somewhere here in Europe, um, AFD uh, party uh, in Je Germany was using the same tactics. And so it's, it's a thing that, that um, you know, appeared during the last, let's say, five, six years. And it's now sort of, it has normalized also through conspiracy theories, etc. So in 2016, when the conservative government in Poland was uh, taking over um, the role of the country, um, obviously people in the media, such as Jerzy Kapuscinski, who was the producer of this of Suicide Room, uh, first. The, the first, yeah, um, uh, which we which was my debut film in 2011, which was about cyberbullying, also some online phenomenon, etc. But it was about a different thing. The main character was a victim. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was, he yesterday then moved from film to television and to Polish television, state television was always vulnerable uh, uh, to, uh, to whatever was going on in politics. Mm -hmm. And when politics changed, people from uh, television was replaced by other people, um, et cetera. So it was, Jezu was one of the sort of the first wave of people who um, he said, he, quoting him, he fired himself from television before they fired him. And, yeah. he, and he knew what was going on, what was about to happen. Uh, and then that's why he approached me and he said, let's make, let's, why don't we get back to what we know, which is, uh, the online uh, realm of you know of manipulation and and smear campaigning, but now I know as I was experiencing it, I see. it firsthand. Mm -hmm. Let's make it a, let's make a film about the industry mm -hmm. that from my our first film in 2011 suddenly happened to exist, and you know it's 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 getting bigger and it's nobody make at, at the time nobody um, made a film about it mm -hmm. why don't we try mm -hmm. and i said yeah i have a character for my other film um a character of a boy who was growing up with a girl mm -hmm. in the countryside and like uh, she was visiting him every uh, every holiday and then they split because her parents decided to go elsewhere for a holiday mm -hmm. and they were well off he wasn't it, there was a difference in class sure. uh, etc and then he 
you know, the film starts with him sort of ding dong, hi aunt, hi uncle, I'm here. Yeah, I'm home. And home. it's an awkward situation. It's a yes. great starter, starter for the like a social thriller, I would say. Mm -hmm. The 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 um, the type of Haneke film. Um, and like, why don't we combine the two? So we started the research, and with the scriptwriter from Corpus Christi, we cooperated on this one, and that's how um, the header was uh, created. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and so so it was a soulmate of Suicide Room. Mm -hmm. But then the more we got into it with the scriptwriter, suddenly so many things were thematically. Um, and next sort of like a, like a con loose continuation of whatever was yes, going on in right, the first yeah, one, yeah, like right? A, so that a continuation, yeah. Yes, yes. And, and, and the realm was sort of the same, the darkness, the thriller-ish um, uh, tone to nice, it. Nice. So I just pushed it for, further with the hater. Nice. And here we, here we are. And, and that was the uh, uh, sort of, I, I would say, business deci decision to keep it more suicide room ish in poland as right, people still remember I the see, first yes. one mm -hmm. rather than you know then it was uh, signed by with we signed with netflix mm -hmm. and for netflix netflix would yes. have to buy obviously the two he he the, the, their decision was to buy just one, one okay. uh the, the the hater so it was the hater the hater um you know i'm, I'm interested in the title of the film and i wonder if um Jan, and maybe you too as well, Maciej, could say something about it. Um, you know, uh, in Polish, it is Heitad. You know, it is um, uh, titled with what is a, I suppose, a recently borrowed word into um, Polish. And, you know, I'm wondering uh, if you could say a little bit about the function of that word in Polish, uh, of the English word in Polish, how you sort of view it, how people around you view it, um, and maybe the difference between that word and, say, the Polish nienawiść, the Polish word for hate. And so, you know, would the film have been different if it had been called Nienawiść? You know, does this Polish word hate, you know, have a uh, distinct meaning that is different from Nienawiść um, or is it synonymous? And so what is at stake in sort of giving the film this title, uh, Hejter, um, in English, in Polish? Um, in a sense, the, your sense of the word in contemporary yeah. Polish. I'm just thinking, yeah. particularly since a lot of us here study the Polish language and some students yeah. go online as well. So I'm interested in the sort of the, um, you know, the feel of the word in contemporary Polish. That's a very interesting question, to be honest. Yeah. It's, uh, Maciej, you go ahead if you want. Um, I think that the word hater and hate in Polish, which is like, it's, it's not, it doesn't, it's not mean the same as nienawiść because nienawiść means just, um, <laughs> it's, it means hate, but hate in, when you're saying hater in Poland or stop being, stop, or for example, stop hating mm -hmm. me, it mm -hmm. means it's, it's connected, stri connected stri strictly to an internet and to the web, mm -hmm. that you're not using this word during, when, when you're fighting with someone, you can use the, stop hating me or stop, mm -hmm. like, stop hating me right now, but it mm -hmm. always have this connection with the web, like virtual, uh, virtual life. So we are not, in Poland, we are using a lot of, English words which we are like still um, putting into our conversations but there's meanings are different than that meanings in as as you could use in, in English mm -hmm. it means different to say um it's it means totally different hate and nienawiść it it, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean the same in Poland it means the difference is in internet and internet hate is the word you when you can that you use you're using to describe an internet hate mm -hmm. not the real hate okay so i think that's... i i yeah i, I guess uh, much nailed it and also i think you know hater uh derives from strictly from gaming mm -hmm. uh circles in 2011 nobody used the word hater right okay um and the hate online hate wasn't uh, a phenomenon anybody sort of it started with cyber bullying that was the yeah, word yes, uh -huh. back then mm -hmm. and so gamers were hating each other there was the the the, the sort of um uh, that was the word that sort of through to the 2012 13 14 mm -hmm. i remember it was sort of emerging as the word describing okay. 
mm-hmm. some the, some kind of a phenomenon especially we we like to you know blame ourselves so everything here in this country so we we tend to think about oh my goodness the internet is the perfect tool for polish people because they can lash out everything they they think of on other uh, and you know and they use it basically they use it to to this day to criticize everything for everything right? Right. Uh, everybody for everything so hate was sort of uh, a, 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 the, a, the perfect were invented for Poland, <laughs> like, like, like uh, that was the, that was the joke of the uh, of the day. Mm-hmm. But in 2016 and 17, we we saw the rise of the industry behind it. So now also it has the professional meaning. You can't say nienavish. Nienavish has this sort of gravity to it. That there's some kind of a um, emotional depth uh, with online hate. And uh, hating, being the hater, it's sort of something of the impulse of the moment, but also right. uh, might be might mm, assign um, might in, um, sort of um, I, I would say indicate a person that strictly uh, works for the hate industry. Right. I see. Uh, okay. Okay. So it's a profession, prof- more professional. It's lighter. It's okay. easier to right, use right, it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a um, you know a contemporary phenomenon. It's a uh, it's a, a sort of a distinct social media, I guess, phenomenon. Yeah. Uh, okay. Do you, wonderful. Do you have the, a the, Polish? The, the same thing ha- didn't happen uh, with with the word lover, which right. is. Hey. Oh, but I, like you have like right. You have likes. You have likes. Do, like do they have likes in Czech? Are they say likey? Yeah, likey. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I just to follow up is there a, a Polish equivalent to the expression don't hate the player hate the game Oh my goodness I don't believe <laughs> much eh? do uh, hate a play and can you repeat I, don't, I don't, know. don't don't hate the player hate the game Yeah um I don't know if there is like I I, I there is nothing on my mind right now like Okay. Probably there is something which means the same, but not with the same words. Um, yeah. I, I guess there is some like people are saying that, but not in this. I don't know. I, I would not. Uh, I don't know right now. Like, but that know. was, you know, the word hate was the word of the year here in Poland, like two two years ago maybe, and politician po- politicians, and it was, it it's the word of the mainstream. And even when I was do, making Corpus Christi, uh, it was the word con- like more and more frequently used. The Corpus Christi is about more about religious um, issues, etc. It was it's about faith and and Catholic Church. So I was there researching a lot within the Catholic Church, and it was a word frequently used by priests. Mm-hmm. during their sermons as well like let's try to stop the the online hate let's right. stop yeah. you know hating yeah. each each other mm-hmm. etc so yeah. it's some it's a word that has suddenly is so useful in a public discussion that it's being constantly used every day mm-hmm. wow wonderful wonderful yeah. um I wondered if I could ask uh, Mache a question um, about um, uh, about your preparation for this role, and it's such a uh, it's such a remarkable role. Um, you know, you're playing a character who is a character for other people. In other words, you're playing an actor. Uh, you're playing a character who is an actor. So you're acting at acting in a sense. And so, um, I believe in some of the um, the the materials for the film, I, uh, I saw a reference to the talented Mr. Ripley. Um, for instance, and um, uh, I myself was reminded of Woody Allen's film uh, Zelig, uh, in which a character, in a sense, becomes uh, the people whom he is surrounded by. He sort of adapts to his environment in a very um, immediate way. Um, but at the same time, your character has a kind of an emotional depth, a kind of an inner hunger, a sort of a longing, a sort of an emptiness that he's trying to fill. So I'm wondering if you could just say a little bit about your your vision of the character, your preparation for the role, maybe models that you looked at, um, how you sort of negotiated the challenge of, of of playing a character who is an actor who must act and be different things for different people, while at the same time sort of representing a kind of a uh, um, you know a sort of an inner unity or or um, or longing. Yeah. So um, 
I think that um, I was I would, like it's all that whole the, this whole role. I was like work. I was waiting for it. I guess for all of my life because um, somehow. I just when 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 we just shoot the movie and we ended the when we had ended the shooting, um, I just realized probably I realized it before before we ended the shooting. But I was um, whole my life I was like seeing the the changing how how our society how Polish Poland is changing because I was I was born four years after Soviet Union fell in Poland, so okay. I was the first generation who um, saw how whole Poland, new Poland, the Poland that we have right now was like built. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was privileged. I was born in artistic family. My parents are artists. So I was like, I have this um, beautiful society of mine that I was racing in, ra ra I was raised in. And I have this like remarkable people all around me. And somehow when I was a child, I saw that I, I went to the school and my parents wanted, wanted me to have this normal life mm -hmm. to like, they wanted to mix those two cultures, this Warsaw high art li life and the, with the normal like countryside life uh, because we, I have two, two brothers. So they wanted us to have a garden a forest and mm -hmm. like dogs and everything. So. They did, and we were raised in this village, 20 kilometers under Warsaw. Mm -hmm. And basically we were like studying and having all these classes in Warsaw, but somehow we we also saw the the Poland and like the society of this of this community this community of village of the, that village that we were moved in. And I remember that all my life I saw it and I was thinking that about how 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 sad it is that like I, I didn't feel comfortable living in this in this in this area and with all this I don't know my life seems to I, I I didn't think about it before and when when I met this kids all around and I saw that my mom like every there was so many differences and I couldn't like understand it because I somehow in during the, my education and everything I started to stop talking about my life because I feel uncomfortable about it because I, I saw that when when kids were like when teacher asked me about after holidays how was your holidays I didn't want to answer this question question because I knew that most of my fellows was not even like move, leave the, the, this this village I and I didn't want to say yeah I was like I, I've been in Czech have been in France or something I, because I feel like I'm comfortable with this these differences and I didn't feel like I sold them and somehow I was like I grew up I moved we moved out again to Warsaw and I meet John Jan and uh, and we started to like I started to rebuild those feelings and refresh them because somehow I lose this contact again like when I when I was 16 and we moved out to new to to Warsaw again and I started to see yeah that I started to like go with the flow. I, I, I was, I started to work in the theater. So I met, I was like hanging out with the people that were like, I don't know how to say it to not sound racist, but I, in my, like, I don't know. I had this group of my friends who were doing the same and having the same, um, I don't know, like free time. We, we spent this time together. So I, when I met Jan, I started to rebuild those feelings that I had in my childhood and those like, um, those thoughts that I have, and somehow I started to like really. We, we, Jan pushed me to work about it a lot, and we started to like. We were we were doing a lot of I don't know. We we were looking at people on the streets, and we were doing like we were working for one year almost. I don't know, maybe half of the year. But I remember I was like working a lot, constantly, just trying to catch this um instability of tom that he's like he didn't he didn't feel comfortable with himself right and i needed uh, and it wasn't so hard to find because i was I, i've been there i i saw it and somehow i've been this person but on the other side i was i was not i don't know i, I don't know how to describe it i was yeah, yeah, i was tomic right, somehow yeah. but from but from gabby's world i don't know if yeah. it's like sounds correct but I, I, I saw it from the golden, I saw it, I was in this society mm -hmm. and I saw a lot of kids who, who, who could feel like Tom, who could feel lonely right. or who could feel yes. 
Mm -hmm. Those kids could feel like jealousy. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I was waking those feelings in my, in my, in my, in my soul. And, mm -hmm. and it's all, it, it all goes with, with the scripts. And we were working a lot about the script. We were watching, we were watching a lot of documentaries and about like, we were working, watching movies, which we, which was like similar um, ideology of um, those social inequalities. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think that that most of my role was like built on those those privileged people, the, the yeah. difference between uh, societies in Poland and this uncomfortable feeling that you're you might be in the lowest level. And I think that yeah, this is the problem of Poland that we're like we we're, we're we're facing from few hundred years now yeah. and it's it doesn't seem to to stop just mm -hmm. right now in 12 for 21st century mm -hmm. because it it begins when kings were in poland and we have when we have a monarchy so we seems to like deal with this problem for a few hundred years mm -hmm. and it, it won't stop at least not if we will still like build these barriers and we if we will like still lock 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 the, lock the in some golden cage look like living this privileged life and saying and living this um people from not not from cities alone and feeling worse i don't know yeah yeah well <laughs> that's, that's it's de answer. definitely it's a country of you yeah. know a constant aspiration mm -hmm. a country in which because we're so like we're so in between east and west suddenly you we are crushed sort of by two mm -hmm. by two like the by the two huge like behemoths <laughs> uh, suddenly we're country in the making constantly like the the boundaries were changing yeah. we were once monarchy then we were non-existent which is you know it's a it's a roller coaster <laughs> so it's hard to maintain yes. any keep yeah. up with any ident identity to be honest there's mm -hmm. so many people in Poland who are like anti um i wouldn't say nation but they are uh, they have a, a huge distance towards identification at all and they treat nationalism mm -hmm. as some kind of uh, um, uh, you know uh, something that's unnatural because mm -hmm. you know we were we didn't have you can't say who who is a pure pole mm -hmm. you know, since we're okay. so mixed yes yes you know, um, so, I um, I wonder if I could. I want to ask a follow up question here. Um, I have several other questions I'd like to, to pose, but I'd like to turn to um, a question that has been forwarded to us in the chat um, from film scholar and Slavist uh, Helena Goshila, um, and she uh, remarks that she's seen all of your films, and she's wondering if you feel that there is something particularly Polish about your films. Um, you know, do you think of yourself as a Polish filmmaker? Is it something that is a kind of conscious, uh, I suppose, you know, is it programmatic in any way? Do you fit into a tradition um, uh, as a, as a, uh, as I, a, um, I, yeah, yeah, well, that's, uh, that's a tricky question because <laughs> I'm in the making myself still. Yeah. I'm, st I'm preparing uh, a few films in English. Uh, my sort of, my long time goal was to create a, f uh, cr to make films in English language, not about particularly any culture, like not about America or United Kingdom or Ireland or whatever, just films sort of like, uh, um, sort of like the hater, which is, it could happen not only in Warsaw, but it could happen in New York and London. I can, that's why probably it's so relatable for producers. Mm -hmm. That's and that's why maybe HBO decided to pursue rights uh, and purchase rights for the hater mm -hmm. and uh, expand it into three seasons of right, right. a TV series because it's so when you think about it easily just taking last I would say events that happened in the United States let's say uh, the Capitol riot being the third season of the hater right right yeah why yeah. not i mean it was basically propelled by mm -hmm. fake news and somebody had to do it right mm -hmm. so the, i i you know uh, there's a lot of people behind the, the scenes working on it to mm -hmm. sort of to like so there are some people um like to like it when 
when it's burning uh, mm -hmm. without any right, direction. Right. So that's why that's how we thought with Maché about our character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then Maché saw the differences from the from the his early upbringing mm -hmm. um, between the countryside and and what was going on in this, this mm -hmm. urban area. Mm -hmm. And the mismatch between the two and totally like two different bubbles with two mm -hmm. different values. And he was jumping from one to another easily. Mm -hmm. So there's in, in Maché himself, I find Maché as extremely talented individual mm -hmm. who has this Zeligian quality. Yes, right. Yes. Uh -huh. And he easily and he infused this, this role with his sort of. So there is the, the, the hater first, I would say first um, draft of the script and what was on uh, the paper was more flat and more black and white See, and okay. much put so much so yeah. many different colors to it yeah, and he ambiguity to it, yeah. you know mm -hmm. uh, maneuvered out different yes. tomic because the main character's name yeah. is tomic also stemming from tom ripley uh, okay okay wonderful yeah yeah yeah, no, I really, um, as I was saying, it's a remarkable role, the, um, you know, the chameleon-like quality, but at the same time, the inner hunger, the longing, the desire of the character for, um, for something, I guess, real or valid in his life um, is a really, a really striking facet of the film. Um, you know, uh, you know you've, you've mentioned a couple of times contemporary reality, and I, you know, I wonder if uh, maybe you could comment on the, um, you know, the bizarre... Uh, I suppose not even really mirroring, but the assassination of Pavel Adamovich, um, a year, um, I suppose, what, in 2019, um, you know, after you had completed photography, but before the film was released. And so, as you, you know, you mentioned the Capitol riot, in, in a sense, there is really this kind of, um, you know, synergy going on, it seems, between the film and contemporary reality. It's not, you know, art imitating life it's not you know um you know life inspiring art or anything like that it's kind of a um seems to be sort of like a circular kind of feedback uh you know mechanism or something like that and um you know what are your thoughts on that how did it uh, did did you when you when you um sort of um you know uh learned of the assassination did it strike any chords with you in the process of making the film did it seem like a uh sort of an uncanny page taken from your script or something like that yeah, well, that's much do you remember the day uh, when yeah, we I heard about Pavel Adamovich's death, and we saw it. It was, it was, uh, it was flabbergasting, astounding. Everything like it was so many different emotions. Because not only it was, um, it was something we were fearing of that mm -hmm. would happen. Mm -hmm. That's why we made this film. So sort of, mm -hmm. and, and, and our, that was sort of our attempt uh, to stop it right, right. from yeah. happening. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously we wrapped up the, sh the, and we wrapped the shooting and two weeks later, probably, or it was three weeks later, the assassination happened. Mm -hmm. And since we yeah, made remember, a film- Remember the moment when, oh. yeah. You, no, I remember the moment when we were reading a script, when we were working on a script, and I remember the moment that I said to you, um, the only thing in a script that is like quite unreal to me and that is like too much is that that the associate, association of like that the death of the president of the city. We we never have any 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 of like terrorism attack in Poland. I like well, during my life it was like. Yeah. We we were we were watching it in a TV like all around the world, but so, like we didn't have it in Poland. Never. I was like I, I was I, I was like saying to Jan, um, you know, only thing that is like fan fantasy in the script that is not it's not real and it won't happen is this like is this a, is this terrorist attack? And I remember the day that Jan called me and he asked, did I saw the news? And I I was like. I was in Morocco then and I was so I, I remember that I felt so sick I, I, I felt so scared that what mm -hmm. the whole world just changed to me because somehow the fantasy that like the something that would n never happen in Poland and I felt so safe in Poland just because we we never had these attacks and everything and somehow the hate like which politics in Poland started like the the conversation 
very rough and very hard to like this 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 conversation between politics and be, between the left wing and the right wing in Poland. They were so it was so intense that somehow this poor sick boy came into the stage in front of whole Poland and he murdered a president of the city just because he felt that he needed to do it because he is an enemy and yeah. this narrative that that politics in what Poland are, are are making us feel to like into is like the, the worst thing is that they're making an enemy that they're, they're making the two uh separate like how like houses and one of the, one of it is the right wing which is very conservative and one of it is the enemies mm -hmm. the left wings so like the progressive people and people of art and everyone who's not thinking just exactly the same as the right wing is an enemy and this is the worst thing what is happening in poland right now and the narrative that everyone who thinks differently is an enemy and it's not only the politics who says that like it's in church it's every it's everywhere in schools like right right now this is like i don't know i i never been in the country like in under the communism regime but right now it feels like i'm i've watched so many movies about it i've heard i've heard about it from my grandparents my fathers and my mother families and somehow right now i feel so uncomfortable because This is the worst weapon when you're saying that someone else has a different, mm -hmm. like l things differently than you. And he, when you're like teaching and saying to the small, small, like smaller people that this is an enemy just because he thinks differently. And that's what happened in Poland, right? The, 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 the murder of the president Adamowicz was just, just to respond to this aggressive narrative that, mm -hmm. that we have right now in Poland. And, Uh, the aggressive using of internet because it's not a, uh, only about the politics it's just about just what we were like talking in a movie and what we were what we were like shooting about the internet that that has no right no like um, i don't know rules no in, in, there is no rules in internet all of, like everywhere in planet and it's not about only about poland it's about america right now mm -hmm. look what's what happened in america just because of the internet mm -hmm. people are like separated the liberty country of liberty which i was like dreaming about all the time the country of like unite united states of america was like has this two biggest like in in the second as somehow every, like, everywhere in planet you can see the changes that internet is making like in france th there could be like the, the, the fights on the streets just because of the internet so i think the aggressive narrative of internet is making people get crazy and this is the worst thing that there is no rules that you can be invisible in internet and spread hate and spread in that like This, this this should be changed like internet should have some kind of constitution or or like Like yeah, the constitution of internet. Yeah, that's that, great. That, maybe that yeah, would be part, that's part, great. part three of the film. Part or uh, that would be the uh, Sala Samovitsu part three. Part three, yeah. yeah. Actually, there is uh, a seed of the of the new idea. How to sort yeah. of? I would say I would say then we would I would love to make a film about AI and how it sort of I see, because yeah. I think it's yeah. the next yeah. step for us. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I'd like to field one more question here from the. Uh, I have several questions yet, but one here is from the Harriman Institute um, audience, um, and it's a question about the uh, the violence in the film, the scenes of violence. Um, and uh, Justin Wilms, the, uh, the the poser of the question, asked if you had any reservations about shooting violence and how you approach the uh, violent scenes, and in particular, um, the ta he um, is interested in the conclusion. He says it's very visceral and a bold directorial choice. Um, so what was your approach to sort of the violence in the film and, and the sort of the viscerality, particularly the conclusion? Um, yeah, well, the, with the violence is, oh, I, I was, you know, I'm, I wouldn't say a fan. Mm -hmm. yes, that's, <laughs> that would make me look sick. But I, um, I, I sort of always um, studied how Scorsese was shooting his violence Okay. moments because there was always something uh there was always a, a fun thing about them there wasn't just like a typical stunt mm -hmm. guy coming and trying to show you the different ooh, so it looks violent but it's not 
Martin Scorsese always found a, a way to, to shoot it so you remember it mm -hmm. somehow. He, he, he uh, like a child observe, observing it for the first time and finding some small details about that are unsettling and will stay with you right. forever. Mm -hmm. And he was, and I sort of, I have the same maybe my sensitivity in that regard is sort of similar because that when i think about violence in my life what i saw here and there i always um, remember small details of yeah. it not the, the somebody who is dying but the way his i would say i don't know finger or something is shaking and so unsettling that yeah, just yes. shooting this stays right. with you forever uh -huh. so knowing that I, the film was going to be titled The Hater. <laughs> it's not a positive title, right? Right. Uh, I decided to have as little um, violence as possible in the film. Mm -hmm. So there's just one right. mm -hmm. scene by the very end. It's just, it's part of the shot, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and uh, you know, if you find any references to it we were thinking about my cinematographer Rade Kwatschuk about Chinatown I see okay. which also has this one yes. shot at the end of the film with fight down away and that was that was our reference like okay. you don't have to make a film about violence mm -hmm. and showing violence at right. the same time. time you can just reveal it for us mm -hmm. for you know quick mm -hmm. like short moment mm -hmm. and that stay stays with you and the impression Overarch overarching impression is it was a film about violence right, of course. or yeah. how hate uh, you know right. uh, mm -hmm. you know spurs violent acts mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. So that was so that was I knowing that I decided to downscale it and just show right. it once uh -huh. and and for a short brief moment mm -hmm. so it stays with the viewer mm -hmm. and that's just it. Mm -hmm. The rest is in this. The rest is the suggestion or in darkness, or just, you know, filtered through uh, the in internet media, right, of course, um, yeah. smartphone, you know, you know, pixelized yes. screens and stuff like none, you know, right, right, not yeah. so easily yeah. decipherable. Um, yeah, yeah, wonderful. No, I love the, uh, the Chinatown reference and the Scorsese yeah. is wonderful, too. Great. I can definitely see that in the film. Um, let me just uh, uh, slide in one more question here from uh, again Helena Goshila um, and hers her question this is also I believe in the YouTube uh, comments if I'm not mistaken um, her question is about uh, sort of gender identity in your films and she writes that um, uh, your films focus strongly on men uh, and um, she regrets the underuse of Agatha Kulesha uh, particularly in Sala Samobuitsuf and so She's wondering about um, the sort of, um, you know, I suppose gender politics of your film, the decision to focus on the men in the film. Um, is there a sort of an underlying, I suppose, um, you know, uh, rationale to that? Um, uh, um, uh, uh, if you could speak to that a little bit. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sure. Obviously, like that's uh, it's still ongoing. <laughs> I my my I was raised by a strong woman and i would love to make a film uh about them uh about a female strong female female character but uh somehow i don't know why when i say it i'm a hypocrite at the same time because i know my next three films are about men mm -hmm. again so i'm looking for ways to change it I'm trying to talk out the producers into making films about maybe why, per se, there is an interesting script I, I, I would love to pursue. Why not changing the main character's sex into being a female, etc. I, I will be, I would love to make a film about him. So yeah, I, I know it's my, I, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for it to happen. It's my future. Yes. Um, but since I'm not there, um, I decided to sort of put all the complexity and female um, elements I'm, I'm trying to find in male characters. So that's why I like to play with sexual orientation, yes, uh -huh. especially in Suicide on the Hater, 
Yeah. Um, since internet gives you access to so many different world worlds at the same time, so you can easily jump from yeah. um, QAnon to Mozart to um, yeah. Nomi Klein yes. to <laughs> yeah, right, of course, to yeah. Noam Chomsky yes. to Timothy Snyder to uh, it's my sort of it's it's you're not, Today, jumping, meeting, huh? you're not jumping enough maybe yeah. <laughs> but yeah but you know to sports. And uh, it gives you this flexibility of having, uh, have, like, being able to look at reality from different angles. Mm -hmm. So that's why probably mm, I like to, like, when I talk about internet in my films, mm -hmm. uh, I, I love to explore through the fluency, like, the, through the flexibility of identity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of the main character yes mm -hmm. uh when the corpus christi also there's it's a film about impersonating a priest yeah. right, right. Uh, yeah. so it's you know changing life it, maybe it's you know it's the, yeah, my right. thing so my, my father was an actor and i watched him perform and be different people <laughs> throughout the whole life so of course, yeah great um you know I'm, I'm wondering about the um the overall sort of um, message of the film, you know, I'm, I, I think that uh, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to have conversations with American audiences or American spectators about it, but I think that for American spectators, it's probably a very bleak film, um, a sort of very, a very dark film. You know, there's no there's no sort of, um, you know, there, obviously there's no happy ending. There's really no resolution. But I'm wondering in particular about the. Um, you know about the possibility of of a sort of a of a of a, of a healing for you know for Tomek for 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 the main for the main character you know the of course the you know the the PR firm that he's working for is very ruthless and sort of um, you know producing this online hate uh, there are the, the 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 nationalist circles are easily manipulated and they can sort of be used to sort of launch violence into the um, into the uh, you know public sphere uh, but then of course the uh, the the wealthy family. Uh, you know the the sort of the Warsaw liberal left liberal intelligentsia. They themselves are also very shallow, um, and you know not entirely, um, I suppose, uh, uh, you know, able to provide some sort of meaning in the world. Um, so it seems to be a, a sort of a world um, evacuated of meaning. It's almost as if there are no uh, no certainties, no foundations, and in particular, no no emotional sort of sanctuaries, no emotional havens. So I'm wondering, is there um, is there a way out of this? I mean, is there is there a um, you know how do we how do we get better? You know how do we how do we heal? You know how do we um, you know what could you know? It's kind of a famous question that um, is often asked in Russian literature. You know, um, you know, what is to be done? What is to be done? You know, what is to be well? Actually, like that's uh, getting back a little bit to Dostoevsky. You know, he was always able to um, sort of. Um, reveal a gleam of hope by like 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 a beam of light by the end of the of his novels always there's you know um with the header that was sort of a th like when we were working on a script we decided to provoke that's the thing yes. i would say yeah. provoke intellectually yes. provoke you not give you not to give you any sense of comfort. Mm -hmm. So you leave, leave the cinema rather shaken and yes, uh -huh. disturbed and not soothed too easily. Um, and we decided to have like to, to finish it with the punch because even if you have the uh, Tom uh, Ripley, talented Mr. Ripley yes, uh -huh. uh, or um, it's, in that regard, it's closer to the Nightcrawler with Jake Gyllenhaal. I see, right, of course, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, also, there's a little bit of tr uh, Travis Bickle ness into the, it, like, uh, taxi uh, like tr trucks, the taxi driver um, right, okay, by the yeah. end of the film. Um, also, that was our sort of starting point when uh -huh. we um, uh, start the journey. Mm -hmm. I started the journey, but um, yes, well, that was the, that was the, I would say, the ambiguity we're pursuing, mm -hmm. like sort of to find a way to find something surprising. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's a win mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. to assert to the to a certain extent for the main character because yes, he yes. I, without spoiling he gets what he wants yes. is he happy you don't know he yeah. did it yeah he did it he was aiming for it and he did it yes uh-huh. and so he was able and when you think about different people not only in media but also in let's say let's say social network the film yeah. the mark zuckerberg the depiction of mark zuckerberg mm-hmm. what he had to do in order to become right of course yeah yeah a zillionaire yes right. and to not only because that's the thing like when you think about certain uh, individuals from history mm-hmm. when you think about hitler mm-hmm. who was like our main character in the film we were studying hitler uh, early um period in which he was getting money from his cousin and he wasn't using it properly just like as the main character in our film who is getting who is getting a, a, some kind of a scholarship mm-hmm. unofficially from parents like a help financial help oh. and then it turns out he was um not telling the truth about his studies etc so their like their dream was to sit by the table on their terms with everybody else and the thing is if you look, if you're trying to use the normal way you're not able to do it maybe your children right. will have the opportunity to wow. maybe sit with the children of people you would like to sit with mm-hmm. in the future but not you maybe next generation whatever mm-hmm. So there is a class divide. It's, it, there's a glass ceiling. And maybe it's obscure and it's all about access. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's there. And mm-hmm. people know it, especially those who uh, are aspiring. Mm-hmm. Those overachievers who every day are, you know, using their elbows to make it sure, up. Sure. Mm-hmm. So, um, and he knows it, our main, but there are some people, one in a million, maybe, hopefully it's one in ten, one in hundred, one in a hundred million, but you know, it's Thomas Gemza, the main character of the of the film, who decides to jump over yes, uh-huh. the generation. It's it's the case of this fire starter right, right. and um, uh, fireman at the same time, oh, who fireman, yeah, yeah. lights the fire in yeah. order to be necessary to be needed right uh-huh. and when he feels necessary then he flourishes mm-hmm. so it's this diabolical figure right, uh-huh. that sort of is inhumane in that regard mm-hmm. and it's sort of it's you would say it's a psychological depiction of of yes. a, a sociopath, sociopath uh-huh. but maybe it's just a some devilish mm-hmm. narrative figure we use for the film mm-hmm. and it's a little bit off human it's not super human. like it's a it's a right. provo- provocative yes intellectual construct more and I, I look at, at that like uh, um, I, I look at uh, from from this uh, angle wonderful great wonderful thank you um, we've got one more uh, question here from the uh, YouTube audience I believe from uh, a uh, graduate student here in our program, uh, Claudia Kelly, um, about the uh, the uh, relationship between reality and illusion in the film. Um, and I think that the essence of her question is, do you think that uh, the uh, film, uh, in a sense, constructs a new type of modern reality in which the, uh, the uh, fine line between reality and illusion is sort of elated or, or sort of brushed over? Um, uh, maybe there are opportunities in this as well to kind of, you know, push things in a productive direction. Um, but is there a sort of, um, uh, I suppose, have we um, arrived at the point where quantity becomes quality, where there is a sort of a new relationship between what can be shown and um, what is the case? Uh, you may even have referred to this already in your desire to make a film about AI, um, about AI as a potential um source of online uh, persuasion, um, you know, uh, you know, um, you know, maybe even manipulation, uh, knowledge and so forth. Uh, so um, is there a difference between um, reality and illusion? And if there is, how do we know what it is? And if there isn't, 
how do we exist in a post, <laughs> in a post, yeah. uh, post, post fake news era? Yeah, uh, that's, a that's, very a, that's a huge philosophical question. That's a huge philosophical yeah, question. I don't want to yeah, yeah, yeah. try even to, to, to get into it, to yeah, yeah. not to expose my, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> lack of knowledge yeah, yeah. But, uh, about yeah, it. No, but, yeah. You know, you know, look, I can try to answer it through the film itself. Yeah, course, yeah that sounds good. Um, you know, there's, it's about, you know, to, like online and the reality versus illusion and who we are versus who we create um, and who we tend to, uh, who, like what the image is we, mm -hmm. uh, we love to become, the images we become. Mm -hmm or the images that reflect us, mm -hmm. etc. cetera. Machi uh, taught me about, about it a lot. Mm -hmm. He is, uh, can I say this Machi about you? He, like, he, he knows a, a thing or two about Instagram and having a huge fa face fan base. I don't know about it, he knows. And he, uh, he actually, he is, I would say, um, a digital animal. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm, I, I'm old guys i I, I was born yeah, in 81 i'm old i don't know i have like this is i'm not used i'm no 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 <laughs> it's true it's true man you were born into it you were i still remember the i'm using cassette. my instagram as just a private journal or something i'm not like there's a there's oh no, let's yeah. not talk about it. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but 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 still, Machi is very fluent. He knows how where to tap. You know how to push the button yeah, in order yeah. to make make it like to 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 sort of yeah um, elicit some kind of interest, etc. And there's there's a lot of you know in much whatever much is doing always attracted attention. He knows how to do it. He's a persona here and I know him from yeah. uh, artistic circles, etc. So it's sort of in line with whatever he's doing online with his Instagram account. Mm -hmm. In that regard, much as much as uh, work was and, and his expertise was super helpful when when it talk, and, and there are like small differences which I'm not, unfortunately, or, or, you know, I don't beat them at all. And, and it will be harder for us <laughs> with each and every year, I think. Yeah. But it's, I'm still, I'm, I'm, I, when I think of myself, I'm, I love tech. I was always following it, all the new things in tech, et cetera, Kara Swisher and The Wired and et cetera. Like, I'm into it all, like, but still, much it comes and hit people of his generation I remember so many things during their conversation. Suddenly I, I realized it's the matter of generation. It's a generational yeah. thing, mm -hmm. yeah. which my only way is to be as perceptive as possible right. to catch them and yeah. use it in, yeah. in the film. Yeah. Um, but in terms of illusion and reality, that's the thing. Like for, at least from my point of view, I don't know how you feel about it much, but from, from my point of view, your generation is so much more i'm not sure the comfortable is the right world but in some like in x sort of playing with identity and privacy mm -hmm. in front of other people so for my generation my online activity mm -hmm. differs and i'm doing everything i can to you know put them apart i could have them apart like separate right. And I don't want to sort of them to like, I, I want the difference to be there, mm -hmm. sort of. I, it's, a, it's an ex, extraneous thing in internet. And for your generation, it's like your third hand, mm -hmm. I think. And that's the difference. I'm much less eager to share with other people using, you know, uh, not only about my life, but also I'm not so, I, I don't post a lot on facebook mm -hmm. i don't try to well i, I post it always, always when i try to promote things mm -hmm. right. which is the old way <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> like i'm doing the same man i'm never like i'm i'm the differences that, that you're saying about it are like pretty easy to see because we were the first generation that was raised with an internet as i don't know i was not the first one but i was like when i was 14 i just described i, I was like Mostly I was doing the sports and just normal t 
teenager stuff. But then I realized, yeah, there is a Facebook, and I just apply. I just um, downloaded a Facebook mm -hmm. when I was I don't know. I started to use it when I was 15 or 16. Mm -hmm. So I'm maybe I'm not the perfect exam perfect example of how kids are using internet right now because I still like feel that something has been stalled from me. Like I know that this kind of per privacy that I'm working, like that I'm trying to, to, to have, I'm trying, I'm trying to like, this is different. This is difficult to, to have because normally a lot of my friends, they're like posting everything. They're going to squash. They're like posting. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the squash. They're playing tennis. They're like, yeah, I'm on tennis. They're playing golf. Everything is like, they're, putting everything into the web just to show people what they're doing but um but it's i think sort of like an extension right certain so, so but it's uh, sort of like an extension of your daily act like life right like an ex like like something yeah. and, it's, and it's part of the their it's part of their life it's, it's mm -hmm. part of the, who they are yes uh -huh. right yeah they need to show it because otherwise they they don't want to like this is something about showing off and something about like showing how interesting my life is because you're all the time you're like everything is so fast like there's so many things going on and you're like scrolling the, the phone and you're saying oh my god she has a wonderful life beautiful bali mm -hmm. mallorca mexico they're all like people are moving and people are having this beautiful lives so so somehow you're starting to feel bad about your life you're starting to compare them and you're starting to think oh shit um, my life is not that interesting interesting so but still we should not general 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 generalize generalize, generalize whole generation like yeah. just because like part of it is still not dealing with privacy but we're still i feel i feel that there is a lot of people I'm included. I feel included because I'm like posting most of my posts on Instagram or Facebook are like promoting my new projects. Mm -hmm. So from time to time, I'm still like playing this game that I, I having something extraordinary. And I, I feel that this, Oh, this is a good, this is something that I want to share, but you need to like, there is a, there is a line of being like, this is not cool to show everything. This is not even comfortable for me. And mm -hmm. for a lot of cool people who are like, like, I don't know, people who like feel, ha ah, shit, I don't want to show like what I'm eating on a breakfast, even though if it looks beautiful and delicious, mm -hmm. I don't feel like this is cool or this is comfortable for me to just mm -hmm. post it, like showing everyone how beautiful my breakfast yeah. was. So I think that, that we should not generalize, generalize everyone because we we are using internet because it's it's existing and it, it it's super hard to not use it when you're young and you have this contact with all of like I'm I having a contact with my friends who are right now in New York mm -hmm. uh, who are in Hong Kong and this is amazing about internet but right. what is scary what is like uh, what is the what is scary about internet is that you 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 could be addicted into mm -hmm. like some kind of illusion of life not like you you're doing shit you're you're going to play tennis not because you like tennis or not because you want to learn how to be a good player you're doing it just because it's like good it to have good. of you playing tennis yeah. on yeah. your instagram account on your avatar life yeah. and yeah. the the what thing that is like very dangerous is that people starting to live I'm, i was just having this conversation today during my work i was working i was shooting and i was talking with my friend who is a photograph like photographer, photographer. And I was talking, yeah we have this we were talking about like last affair of like i have this romance and i was like shit and i get into this to this group of young people who who are posting every every detail of their life every minute like mm -hmm. it was more like showing how and how look i always start i started to think about like is this romance real just because this feeling is real or is it real just because i'm matching and they want and 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 it it was it was cool to to post a lot of pictures with with cool people right. and yeah. we we were talking with with my friend about it that this is so this is so sick and so uncomfortable to like, I don't know, I, I miss this privacy. I miss this like free time that you're not sitting with, I miss this life when when you're not all the time looking into the phone. This is, um, so we should not generalize, uh, generalize old generation just because oh, yeah. there is some kind of uh, 
yeah. wave on shows with yeah. a live. Yeah. Uh, and I think there is a lot of young people who are not even using, and there's a subculture of clear, or I don't know how to say in English, yeah. but of like clear mind people who are not right. drinking, not taking drugs, not smoking yeah. cigarettes, and not even like probably not even using that much internet as yeah. as as I do or as everyone else do. So there's a lot of subcultures, and I think that we should not describe reality as yeah. only this horrible vision right. of yeah. young people yeah. being yeah. addicted yeah. and being just like, this right. is very important for us because otherwise our generation will be lost because we will be only seen as this vampires who are like all the time like sucking this energy from internet right. and i and, think yeah. that there is so many beautiful cultures that we need to talk about too but right now we are talking about haters so yeah. this is really a dangerous this is a dangerous like wave that yeah. internet is still well, it's still a dangerous yeah, place right uh, now we don't have any rules there yeah it's interesting that you said the word the word vampire because as you were talking you essentially described the character of of, of tomas uh, gemza you sort of you know um you know unpacked his psychology there he he needs he doesn't do things because he's in he's invested in them he he does them because it would be good for him to be seen doing this you know it would be good yeah. for him to be seen in this circle of people and so in that sense yeah uh, the film seems like it is a sort of a, a a generational portrait but a sort of a a distorted portrait or or as you said jan a, a provocative portrait a deliberately sort of negative portrait of of a generation um with its kind of darker tendencies um sort of taken to an extreme um yes yeah i think that it, it will change it won't take long like this kind of tendency and this kind of um this kind of i don't know it's going to change because people I believe that, like the, that is, it's, it won't. Like, it, some people will will follow this lead and will follow this like way that they're gonna show it. But I feel about myself. I feel that even me, who are, I, I'm not using inter internet that much, and I feel that I, I love I love it about my life that I'm not always in the internet. But even now, even if I'm not using it that much, I'm still thinking, yes, I need to use it less because mm -hmm. I want to use it only to contact people, only to get knowledge but not to let those bad instincts like become me. Sure. So this my, is... my, my chick is more optimistic than I am. I think, <laughs> I think it, will, it will evolve in something we don't even expect now. Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah. Watching, yeah. Like, that's the difference probably between my 20-year-old uh, daughter and my 11-year-old son. Right. Like I, it's just nine years, but it's like an eon. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine, yeah. <laughs> so, well, you know, it's interesting that um, both you, Jan, and you, Mache, have slightly different perspectives. Um, it seems that because both of you, in a sense, uh, you know, have a f have one foot in 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 each generation. You know, Jan, you are sort of a member of two generations, in a sense, the sort of the final, um, you know, generation sort of born, uh, you know, during the PRL and but but coming of age in the '90s. And you, Mache, are, you know. Uh, a sort of a post PRL generation, but still not quite in what we would call, I suppose, I suppose, uh, I think both of you guys are what we would call millennials, I suppose, or, uh, yeah. you know, you, you Mache yeah. may be a, maybe <laughs> on the verge of being a Z millennial and, Z uh, and you, Jan, may be still kind of a late gen Xer or something like that. Or yeah, I, 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 I was happy to learn that I'm a first generation millennial according to Wikipedia, and I, I was okay. so happy. <laughs> I was so happy. The, the, you know, yeah, I'm addicted you, to Wikipedia. You guys are both. Um, you guys are both kind of on the cusp, like on the threshold. You know, right in between. And so that probably gives you the perspective on both generations. And you see, Mache, that difference between privacy and performance. And you see, Jan, that desire to separate. Um, you know, the two worlds. Um, so yeah. I think it probably, yeah. probably, um, you know, probably um, is a good thing to be in between. Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's the question of this reality versus uh, illusion, mm -hmm. you know, and when internet emerged uh, and we started using it, there was this, I'm sure you know this phenomenon of uh, very vicious emails mm -hmm. and ver from very nice people. Yes, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. It's like, so, in, you know, sometimes people sound harsh yeah. when they write, but when yes. you meet them, yes, yeah. 
it's yeah, totally the, different, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, so uh, the difference between the two in yeah. our generation is, uh, I would say, bigger than what I find in younger generation. They tend to be closer to whatever they post. Right. And they don't have as much. So that's the thing. Like we, uh, we still haven't learned. And we, we are obviously learning, but we, it's not natural. It's learned. Right. For them, it's more natural. So it's yeah. easier for them to be as they are online. Mm -hmm. as offline for me right, is right. i have to al always filter myself right, filter into it. online yeah, right it sounds pretty much like promoting myself <laughs> <laughs> well you know we um i imagine it is what it has got to be after 11 o'clock p.m there in poland huh for you guys yeah, the vampire hour. Vampire <laughs> hour has begun. <laughs> yeah, we love it. And, um, <laughs> so we, um, you know, uh, Chris, do you have any questions you'd like to ask at all? Or? Well, I've got probably 30, but we'll let you know. <laughs> We've got to let these guys go. Thank you guys so much. For, yeah, uh, you know, for... I, uh, I thought I would just share one final comment here from the uh, Q&A. Uh, one person writes in without um, a question, but simply writes uh, that the acting in the film was stellar. Uh, very often, I think that she's talking about you, Mache, a flat expression plus the slight raise of an eyebrow, the twist of a lip, one of the best films uh, that she has ever seen. So uh, just a compliment there. Whoa, you. thank you. Yeah, um, Mache, you know, we, we can talk a lot about uh, our one of our power gestures, we like to call it, was when Mache was clenching his jaw, like sort of like squeezing his teeth right right oh my god i have a problem yeah. no, no, no more longer but no i have more, such but... a problem with the with the tension and because i yeah. I, I want to have this like all the time like twisted. yeah the and muscle pretty... was there after wrapping uh, the uh, finishing the shoot i i believe Machik's teeth were shorter Oh really? <laughs> when we started, yeah, probably. So better. this is all for this is the price of being Thomas Gimza in the film. Yes, okay, I can imagine. Yeah, your your orthodontist was probably not happy uh, <laughs> to see you. Uh, well, yeah, I you know if you see if you saw one because the then there was this pandemic, right, right course, away, yeah, almost yeah, right away. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah, didn't yeah, have yeah, we didn't have yeah, time even to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But hopefully well, it's finishing, right? Hopefully, yes, yes, it's hopefully, yeah, yeah, hopefully, spelling. Yes, we'll return to a new, new normal, a new, new, norm, normal. new version of normal. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Please, yeah. please, I just need yes. to get out of Poland immediately. I want to go to vacations. <laughs> yeah, we do like, like traveling. Just guys, go. I don't like travel thirsty. Travel thirsty. Travel thirsty. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. But you can, you can, you know, you can travel, but you need to have a test. So I was traveling a little bit just around Europe, but I need to go to United States immediately. So I will, pro I don't know, I need to do, I will, if there will not be any possibilities, I will, I will swim by an ocean on a kayak or something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, there. Wonderful. Well, come and see us in New York when you come. Yes. Yeah, that was our dream to finally come to the place in which, which gave us Taxi Driver with yeah. our film in, uh, yeah. at, Tri you know, at Tribeca Film yes. Festival. At Robert Shake De Niro's with, Festival, yeah. Yes. Shake hands with the, the, the founder of the festival. And it mm -hmm. unfortunately, one in 100 years, the pandemic hit. So mm -hmm. it was this year. Yeah. But yeah, yeah we, will, we will go there definitely. Machi will be sooner than later in New York, right, Machi? I think I will be there in the middle of April. That's, oh, terrific. Yeah. yeah, and I have like, I, I don't know if they're still here, but I have a few friends on Columbia University and they were like tapping me during this conversation a little bit. <laughs> don't be so like, they, they were giving some advices. Advices, um, actors' advices, actors' uh, advices. <gasps> yeah, yeah, they were very cool. And um, I'm going to be like, I'm, I was, uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to, to meet you in person, guys. And Beautiful. thank you for the conversation. Okay, great. Thank um, you. We'll look forward to uh, hosting you on this end. Yeah. Okay. And well, thank you, thank you, Jan, as well for uh, sharing your thank you guys very very thought provoking and profound film with us. Thank you for for, for inviting us. Um, right. 
to, to, to this conversation. Hopefully one day we can visit Colombia and meet you in person. Yes. Until then, stay safe, maybe. Hey, likewise. Yeah, yeah. you too. And Thank thanks to our, our audience for, for joining this, uh, this installment of our series. As I said, please join us again April 13th for the next one. And uh, join me in, in thanking and, and saying goodbye to our guests. It's been right, a great, okay, yes. great show. Let's see, where oh, am I? Uh, yeah, goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Okay, bye. Thanks.